I'm Emily Hofs. We are at Takini Arena today for the Yukon's very first canine expo. The perfect location to discuss all things canine for this episode of The Dog Show. I'm here with Sheila Robertson. She is the organizer for this event. Sheila, how did you get the idea for this event? Uh, road trip, coming back up the highway from a dog show in Camrose last fall and with my husband and I were talking about um, just the Yukon and, and how many dogs are here, how many people love their animals and all the different businesses and just thinking wouldn't it be a great idea to do sort of a, a trade show or an expo and just bring together everybody and invite them to come out and, and show what have you got? Who are you? Where are you? What do you do? Why why dogs? That type of thing. I'm a member of the uh, Yukon Kennel Club and have been for several years but basically brought it to the club and said would the club like to sponsor it? They said wow what a cool idea and and uh, here it is and it's the beginning you know we're hoping now that we've all learned a whole bunch of things from it that we can carry on annually hopefully great so hope to make it an annual event yeah hope so and so you brought it to the kennel club where did it go from there what from there what was the next step how did you reach out to your um, dog contacts we basically made a list a big long list of everything we could think of dog related so the vets and the the boarding kennels training clubs uh, retail stores and then just broke it down and so each of us contacted eight ten different businesses and um, you know so we had a couple probably each that actually turned out photographers yeah it's great yeah so a great response yeah I mean there's more there's definitely more out there but because they're like well what is this you know kind of and and it is a small town and we are we're not in competition with each other I don't think because everybody has their their thing and there's always room there's, there's room. What is your greatest learning experience on putting together this kind of expo? Uh, probably more advertising. We really need to. We had zero budget <laughs> to start with. I think we broke even with renting the space. Now, if we know going into it that, yeah, advertising would be and we get more booths, it'll be a, a bigger deal. It'll be great. So what kind of awareness were you trying to bring to the dog community through this expo? Just what's available. Most homes have one, two, or three dogs, like that type of thing. Probably just that training is a lot of fun. It's not com competitive. It's it's a lot of fun. There's agility. There's, you know, all these different types of things. Grooming and health aspects, feeding, all that stuff that's really, really good information here. And so just that, that people realize, yeah, it's just little Fido at home, but there's a whole network of things available in our community. Whitehorse is loaded with dog. Yeah. Really well equipped. <laughs> so if somebody wanted to get involved in this, helping it grow for next year, what would they need to do? Uh, probably be be watching. Um, let us know. Yukon Kennel Club. Um, there is a there's a Facebook page. There is a website. It's a little bit defunct right now, but we're going to work on that. And then just, you know, stay in touch. That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sheila. I'm very much looking forward to next year's event. Thanks. Yeah, we are too. Can you introduce yourself to our viewers and also your dogs? Sure, hi, I'm Sherry and this is Jeff Vendelst. And this is George and he's eight. And this is Tundra and she's 10 and they're both Samoids or Samoyeds. And what are the strong characteristics in Samoyeds? Um, I think there's a lot, but they're known as um, the Christmas dog uh, just because of their appearance and their look and they historically herded reindeer, but were also really social, um, social dogs. They're considered one of the ancient breeds, and they do lots of stuff. They sled, they ski drawer, they both compete in agility and obedience, and she's certified as a therapy dog. And what area of the world do, does the Samoya traditionally come from? They are from Siberia, so similar to the Siberian Husky. 
So they probably thrive in this climate. Oh, yes. She, uh, they both look for the last remnants of snow to roll in, so yeah. How did they become a part of your family and, and why are you so um, close to your dogs? Well, we, we just, I don't know, we had a dog, our first dog was a mix and we just fell in love with it and we love their independence. They're an independent breed, they're kind of stubborn and we just sort of fell in love with it. And we, I also um, have a friend and we actually spin their wool so they make all of our winter clothing. Oh so wow! Winter mitts and scarves and hats. That is so neat! Out of their fur. Okay, well they are just beautiful. Thanks for talking to us. I'm with Jackie Nicholas from Talk Dog Training Academy and she's going to talk to us about what she does. Um, I'm a professional dog trainer and this is my daughter uh, Ariana and this is our dog Jordy and I've been training for over 20 years. Um, I deal mainly with behavioral issues. Uh, I do basic obedience, advanced obedience as well as uh, aggressive behaviors and pretty much anything has, all, has come to me at some point. If you could have one bit of advice, important advice to any dog owner out there, what would it be? Um, socialization is huge uh, with people, kids, dogs. I would get them in training the second you get your dog um, and just continue until you can trust your dog. What are some things to remember if I have my dog in training? What do you, what do you want to convey to me about after they're finished training? Um, to just continue training throughout their life. Um, it's a commitment and you know after you've done like, several years of work to, just to maintain that. Continue socialization, continue working with your dog and and just enjoy your dog. So we were lucky enough to get a viewing of some of your techniques there. Can you talk about what you and your clients were doing in the ring? Okay, so we um, did basic obedience all on leash and as well as a little bit of agility work and we combined it together uh, and put music in it and it was a uh, it's not easy to do and they did a great job with the with the distractions and the different flooring and just everything that was happening. I thought it went really well. And what is it what is it about agility for dogs? Is it fun for them? Is it contribute to better behaviors? Why do you why do you provide that? Well, I, I provide that cuz it, it, it channels their natural instinct to hunt and to jump and to chase after the food uh, because that's what they would do if they're in the wild and that's what we provide in a, in a more sport way for the dogs. And it's also a great way to uh, develop the relationship between the owner. And you provide this for all breeds, mixed breeds, mud. Do you have, you have success with dogs that maybe don't have characteristics for agility? Yes, uh, you know any dog you can teach agility. We just will modify things, we'll maybe bring the jumps down and uh, every breed, breed is welcome. So I have heard about something called the puller technique. Can you tell us about that? Um, well, th there's different skills that you can do with the puller. Um, what it does is it channels their natural instinct to, to bite and to tug and to chase, which is what they would do in the wild if they were hunting. So I, by, by channeling that in a play, you, you take them from their more primitive being into a play and it's just a really great focus tool as well so you know you can take your dog to Rotary Park or the beach and you can focus them with, with a tool and it's just a way of keeping your dog with you. What about these things I see here what do you use these guys for? These are again our uh, we use these for when we're doing obedience training instead of using a lot of food reward we will use food sometimes but we bring this out and we reward the dogs uh, in obedience and then we, we pull them back into work again so this is a, a more of a reward and with this we keep the dog focused in, and connected into you. What do they like about this? Is this a tugging, a chewing? This you can throw, bite, jump at it and tug so this has a handle and it just allows them to, to tug with it. All right, so thank you very much Jackie. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye Jordy. This is Bonnie Ritchie, and Bonnie, can you tell us about your best friend? Okay, uh, she's an Australian Shepherd. She just turned three. She's what you call a red merle with white markings and copper points, and she um, is a herding dog. Um, I've had Australian Shepherds since the early 90s, off and on, and they're a very uh, dual-purpose dog, good for agility, good for uh, service dogs, good for um, obviously herding, <laughs> very protective in the property, um, and nice size. You notice they don't have a tail, 
and um, they come in four colors, a red tri, a black tri, a blue merle, and a red merle. And there are no two Australian Shepherds alike. <laughs> I can tell that by her very distinctive face. She's such a beauty. Yeah, she has a blue fleck in one eye. People think that there's something wrong with her eye, but it's no, it's because one of her parents is a blue merle. And so that's not unusual. And what kind of training do you do with her? Is Did you train her as a pup? Is it ongoing? What, how many hours have you put in, would you say? Well, I actually got her um, from Washington. She was a juvenile delinquent when I got her. She was an adolescent over six months and had no uh, bonding or experience. And she, we call her the wild child. And, um, but I do positive reinforcement. I'm fairly patient. I do a lot of exercise. I live in Tagus, so she runs in the bush. And um, I think that gets you the results rather than force. Um, aggression begets aggression. And, and if you try to manhandle these dogs, it won't work. So you have to get them around your way of thinking. Although Australian Shepherds think they know more than you anyway. <laughs> well, she seems like a very happy girl. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Bonnie. This is Constable Scott King with the City of Whitehorse. Constable, um, as a dog owner in Whitehorse, what do I need to know? Well, as a dog owner in Whitehorse, you need to know that um, every dog needs a, a City of Whitehorse license. Now, after six months, it's required to have a City of Whitehorse dog tag for your animal. And uh, yeah, that's one of the requirements we need. How would I go about doing that? What are the steps? Uh, you can come into the City of Whitehorse uh, Animal Shelter or City Hall. Um, now, if your dog is chipped and neutered, it is a free license and it's a lifetime tag. If your dog is just neutered or spayed, then it's a, a lifetime license. And when you say chipped, what does that mean and how does one get it done? Um, the chipped, you get that done at Alpine Vet or any vet clinic in town. And uh, it's basically a chip that is planted in the dog and we can use that to read it and notify the owner that we do have their dog. So. And what about areas of town where my dogs can be off leash, on leash, do you have maps available or how do I know where it's safe to keep them off leash? Uh, we do have a map on our website there but um, basically it's 100 meters from any residence and we do have a dog park downtown at the end of Maine that is uh, fenced off and a good area to take your dogs. Um, so we are approaching summer now, warmer weather's coming. Something very important, I think is very important, is making sure your dogs are healthy in the heat. Do you have any advice for dog owners on that? Yeah, just proper ventilation and you know if you're going into a store or somewhere for a, a extended period of time just to make sure that uh, you have proper ventilation and enough food and water. And what am I supposed to do if I see a, a dog downtown or anywhere in town um, in a hot, trapped in a hot car? You can give us a call at the emergency line and we can go down there and take a look and locate the owner and let notify them. So. Thanks so much, Constable. Yeah, thank you. I'm here with Alex Hill, and we have another adoption success story. This is her friend Nellie. Alex, how did you and Nellie get together? Well, I adopted Nellie from any domestic animal rescue in Tagish uh, when she was about four months old. How did you find her? Uh, they have a Facebook page, and when I came back from university, I started following a few Facebook pages looking for a puppy because I knew I wanted one. What was it about Nellie that drew you to her out of all the dogs? Well, I really wanted a black dog. I used to volunteer at the Victoria SPCA, and we were always promoting black dogs because they're not adopted as quickly. Oh, interesting. So she was actually the only black puppy that I saw come up around that time. What makes Nellie a good fit for your family? Nellie is the most relaxed dog I've ever met. I was actually worried about her when we got her because we'd have to stand her up uh, to get her out of bed and lift her up to put her in the car. She's very chill, so we love that. But she can also be active when we want to take her for a hike or on a bike ride. Then she'll just sleep the rest of the day. So I understand that Nellie's got a couple friends staying with her right now. Can you tell us about that? She sure does. We are fostering two puppies um, from Yukon Animal Rescue Network. They are oatmeal and shreddies. They're from the cereal litter. How did you get connected with them? How, what does it mean to foster them? Well, um, fostering them means that you are looking after them. Uh, for, in this case, it was until their parvo shots kicked in. Now they're available for adoption because that was uh, yesterday. They're finally allowed to go to their forever homes. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just holding on to them until we find people who want to take them and keep them forever. You said Yukon Animal Rescue Network. <laughs> <laughs> Yarn. What, what, the work that they do, how does that differ from the shelter in town? Well, they're a rescue organization, so Cheryl and uh, Damien, I believe is his name, they actually look for opportunities to help puppies like these guys. They were being offered for free on a buy and sell site, and Cheryl um, tries to 
get people to give up full litters so that she can make sure they're adopted out in a responsible manner. So if you wanted to adopt one of these guys, I mean, how could you not want to? Um, <laughs> what would you have to do? Well, you could come meet them here. Uh, people can message Yarn to set up an appointment and then they have to go through an application process with references and a little questionnaire. Um, and then Cheryl will review that and get back to them. Great. Thanks so much, Alex. You're welcome. We're here with Cliff Robertson from the Neighborhood Pup. Cliff, what sort of uh, health items do you focus on at your business? Well, we uh, start off with a raw food diet. We also do anesthesia uh, free canine teeth cleaning. And we have a lot of uh, supplements that are natural. And what are the benefits of a raw food diet for our dogs? First of all, we have healthier teeth and, uh, and gums. And uh, the diet will improve your dog's dental health uh, as raw food and meaty bones uh, means um, less plaque and less bacteria. Also a healthier skin and coat. A lot of dogs nowadays because of the commercial dog food and what's in it, uh, like uh, grains, which produce sugar in a dog and sugar produces yeast that'll cause skin infections, yeast infections. And so a raw diet uh, actually will help clear up a dog's problem. So if somebody has a dog that has these problems, stick them on raw and within weeks it'll be gone. Wow. It'll clear it up, generally speaking. Also a boosted immune system and that's kind of important even in a human. Um, the more boosted your immune system is, uh, the less chance you're going to get any sickness or disease in your life. And so that's, that's just a real basic right there. And so what is it about teeth? Why do we want our dogs to have healthier teeth and gums? Teeth and gums? Well, you know, the problem with uh, it's the same as a human. Again, you know, you want to have your teeth clean and you want to have healthy gums also. If uh, tartar builds up on a dog's teeth, then all of a sudden it begins to push on the gums, gingivitis sets in. Uh, the thing about tartar is it has a lot of bacteria on it that can enter into the bloodstream through the, the gum line. And then, of course, then it affects the kidney, the heart, the liver. And so if you clean your dog's teeth, then uh, you're going to get a fresher, fresher breath. You're going to get healthier gum and uh, you're going to get a happier dog. So not only is it good for the dog's appearance, it's extremely good for the dog's health. And how does anesthesia-free teeth cleaning work? I settle them down, calm them, get to know them, and then just begin to work in their mouth. With uh, a dental scaler, a hand scale, then uh, I polish it with a uh, human-grade um, uh, profi paste, and then uh, we uh, use a couple of things uh, for the bacteria and, and then we brush them after that. Thank you Cliff. Yeah. We're here with Ashley Griffiths and her best buddy Daisy May and I have to, ha I have to admit that I have a soft spot for this breed. Ashley, why don't you tell us a little bit about her? Uh, this is Daisy May. She's an Irish Wolfhound and she's 11 months and she's an amazing dog. She is very gentle, very kind and loving. She's very loyal. They're known as gentle giants. They require very little exercise, despite its large size. Um, I have three children, and so I need a friendly dog. And she has absolutely made our family complete. She loves the kids to death. You know, she's still a puppy. A lot of people don't realize that because she's so big. But How much does Daisy May weigh? She's around 100 pounds right now. And 11 months, is she full grown? Uh, she's going to fill out a little bit. She, this is probably as tall as she's going to get. Um, the males get a little bit bigger, but she's probably not going to get much bigger. Thank you so much, Ashley. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Daisy May. Thanks, good girl.
had so much fun today at Yukon's first canine expo. And that's it for this episode of The Dog Show. If you have a special dog that you would like to see featured on our show, please contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, I'm your host, Emily Hofes. Thanks for watching.